Hello guys and welcome back. So in the last section we talked about the built-in structural and attribute directives. Now in this section we'll create our own custom structural and attribute directives. Okay, so we'll start with uh, custom directives. Uh, now custom directives are again TypeScript classes that are in uh, that are decorated with the uh, directive decorator and then they contain a selector in the form of a metadata to which we specify the attribute that we want to uh, use as a selector for for a particular um, directive so let's quickly use or let's quickly create a directive here okay so i'll type in ng g for generate d for directive and in the directives folder i'll create um, my first attribute directive let's call it um, change case okay so what this directive uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm envisioning for this directive is that it will change the case of whatever the user types in okay so if i go to this directive here then I'll see that there's already uh, an app change case selector added. Okay, so now with this, I can essentially use it in my component. I don't really have any component where I can host these directives. So let me just create a component as well. So in the components folder, I'm going to create a directive host component. Okay. And this will create the component files for me in the app routing module i'm also going to add a path for directives and i'll specify the component name as directive host component like so that i'll have to import okay now in the directive host components template let's create an input field which is of type text i can simply use the directive in here like uh, just take the name of this without the square brackets like so and i can use it now to check if it is working or whether the directive is getting called i'll simply log something to the console Let's save this and go back to the template here. Let's see, it's saying disconnected. Not sure why the app is running. So I'm gonna have to empty cache and hard reload, I guess. Okay, if I go to the built in directives now, let's do one thing. Let's add the link to the component host or the directive host in in our headers as well. Directives and this would be directives as well. So if I save this now and go back, then I should see a directives uh, section as well. If I click on it then something gets printed to the screen so we can say that the directive was called okay now in the directive host component if i change something then i want that change or i want this particular value inside the directive so that i can uh, play around with it or change it okay so to get an instance of the element that this directive sits on i can inject something known as the element ref as a dependency okay so i'll inject that element ref i'll have to import it from angular core okay now I can also 
now this since this has an ng on in it if i use that lifecycle hook for the directive then i can simply log the element ref value property to the console so let me just log that console log and the value of this okay let's save this and now right now there is no value so nothing got printed but if i change it or maybe let's say if uh, this directive had a value initially of say Siddharth, then Siddharth would have printed to the console from this ch uh, change case directive. Okay, now with the name of this directive, it might be pretty clear to you guys as to what exactly I'd be going to do in here. So, what I will do is that if the user types something in and blurs away from this directive, or blurs away from this input text field, then the case of the text that the user typed in should change accordingly. Okay, so now since we are, we will have to listen to the blur event on this um, input element. There is something that can be injected as a dependency for that as well in the directive. Okay and or sorry uh, that is something that won't be injected as a dependency but we can get a hold of it using something called a host listener okay now host listener is something that i'll have to import from angular core and to the host listener we need to pass the name of the event that we are uh, that we want to listen to so in this case the event name is blur and after this we specify a handler for this event okay so whenever the blur event happens then i want to do something with it okay so let's name this handler as on blur okay now uh, let's say if let's say that i wanted to simply change the case of this to uppercase okay so i'll do something like this so what i'm doing essentially is i'm taking the element ref that i injected as a dependency i'm accessing the native element here which is going to give me the actual dom element or the actual DOM uh, DOM input element for me okay and then I can access its value attribute to get the value of it and then since this value is going to be a string I can call a to uppercase method on it to essentially uh, change all the characters in it to uppercase okay so this will happen on blur and uh, after changing that value to uppercase I'm simply reassigning the value property of uh, of the input to this uppercase text like so. So let's save this and go back. Now if I type something in, let's say this garbage text and blur, then it gets converted into uppercase. Okay, I can do the same uh, by calling lowercase on it. save and uh, if there is a text here then it will all be converted into lowercase let's uh, type in some type something in all in uppercase if i blur then it's going to get converted into lowercase okay so uh, this is a way in which you can use directives in uh, custom attribute directives in angular to basically change the attributes of a particular element that this directive sits on okay but there are a lot of cases or there might so there might be some cases wherein uh, see angular is not really 
restricted to just run on the browsers. It can also run in cases wherein it might not have access to the DOM. Okay. Uh, it might run in cases like in service workers, or it might also run uh, in cases uh, wherein you have to basically uh, generate some content on server. Okay. So server side rendering is required in that case. And in that case, uh, you might not have access to the DOM. Okay. So in if that is the case, then you might not have access to uh, the DOM properties. So we cannot directly access the DOM and change it like so. Okay. So there is a better way to do this. And that better way is by using something called a renderer. Okay. So let's first inject renderer as a dependency. It, this is going to be of type renderer to okay. that can be imported from angular core. So I'll do that. Okay. And now with the help of this renderer, we can basically change the value of this uh, element. Okay. So let's first get this value here. So I can do something like value or say changed value. Okay. And I'm sure that this is going to be a string. And this is something that I'll be taking from the element dot value property. Okay. Now, with the okay, let's just convert it into lowercase itself right here. Okay, and now with the help of this renderer, I can call a method like set property. Okay. And to the set property, it requires um, three arguments. First one is the element that we want to change that property on. Second thing would be the name of that property. And the third thing is the value of it. Okay. So the element is going to be this element reference that we injected as a dependency. The name of the property that I want to change is the value. And the value is going to be the changed value like so. Okay. So if I save this now and go back, I'm essentially converting it into lowercase. So if I type something in uppercase and blur away, then it should have converted it. Okay. Let's check. Maybe I did something wrong with the template. Oh, okay. So this required the native element here, but I didn't pass it that. So I've just done that. Now, if I go back and uh, type something here in uppercase and blur away, then it gets converted into lowercase. Okay. Let's see that again in action. Right. So, uh, okay. Now we have a directive that's using the renderer instead of directly accessing and changing values on the DOM. Okay. Uh, so this is one of the better ways of implementing an attribute directive. Now let's say that uh, right here, we just have the two lowercase or two uppercase hard coded in here, right? But if say we wanted the user of this directive to uh, tell us how they want the text to be um, transformed, what exactly can be done in that case? Well, uh, as we already know, we can do that using uh, things like input properties. So let's say if this has a case and I specify here the value as uh, upper and save this. Now I'll have to define a case, an input property named case in here. So let's do that input case, which is of type string. I'll have to import input from angular core. So let's do that. Here. 
okay and now if based on the value of this case i can essentially call to upper case or to lower case on uh, on this uh, string value that we take from the native element so to do that i'll simply specify the case i'll check for the case as upper and if okay let's rename this from case to something else maybe or oh, i'll have to specify a question mark as well so if this dot case is equal to upper then it has to change it to upper case else it has to change it to lower case like so let's save this and right now we have specified upper so if i blur out, blur out from that text field it's changing it to uppercase but if i was here and the value was in uppercase and i had to change it to lower then if i blurred out then it would change this to lowercase okay but here as you can see we had to we had to use some other um, attribute binding to pass this value to it but what if we wanted to just use this directive here as an attribute uh, binding or sorry as a property binding and then pass this uh, value of this case in here well in that case we can simply alias this case here and alias it to the name of this directive like so okay and now i can simply get rid of this case here and uh, let's do that and i'll use property binding now in this case and save it like so okay now if i hover out or if i blur out then the directive is still working but the template in this case is a bit more cleaner okay so this is how you can create um, attribute directives in angular initially we used the element ref to simply change the value property of this native element uh, directly but there are some cases in which we don't really should be doing this or we do, we shouldn't really be changing the dom because there might be cases in which angular is running uh, in some environments where there is no access to dom so in that case a renderer should be used that can be imported from angular core and then in the renderer we can simply call method like set property and then change the property value of this native element that is our input field to this value that we can specify in here okay and we can use host listener to listen to an event on that particular um, input field like uh, so okay so this was all regarding uh, attribute directives in angular now in the next video we will talk about creating a custom structural directive in angular so i'll see you guys in the next video bye